Hello and welcome to another episode of the Kid Stories Podcast. I'm Phil Bechtel. Let's get on to some shoutouts. Alby Sage shared an awesome drawing he did of a ninja wearing the fart belt. Awesome drawing, Alby. I think if you were a character from the stories, you would have the secret power of transforming into a dragon whenever you wanted. Thanks for listening, Alby. Harrison, Xander, and Frankie from Australia are big fans of the show. I think if you three were characters in the stories, you'd be the multi-kids, and you would each have the ability to split into multiple versions of yourself so there were hundreds of you. Thanks for listening, Harrison, Xander, and Frankie. Today's episode is titled Max and the Monkeys, Part 3. Max had been cooped up in the escape pod with his six monkeys for days. It was pretty rough in there. It smelled. They ate all the rations within the first ten hours. And while they had figured out how to go to the bathroom and expel the waste into space, that whole process was not pretty. It was not pretty at all. By the time they reached Midwan, they never wanted to get inside another spaceship for as long as they lived. Max brought up the view screen in the escape pod and four monkey fingers reached out to start touching it. No touching the screen, snapped Max. You can't do anything when everyone touches the screen at the same time. We talked about this. Max scanned a 3D map of Midwan and zoomed in on Elder Tree, a forest that Blackwell mentioned before Max and the monkeys took off in Glaw's ship. Okay, there, said Max, zooming in further on a medium-sized building near the edge of the forest. Professor Blackwell said he was going to set up his laboratory on the edge of Elder Tree. Based on the size of this building and the other buildings, I think that has to be it. Max set the coordinates and the escape pod rattled as it descended down to the planet. The pod landed near a plain-looking building and a beautiful-looking forest. Someone ran from the building, wondering about all the noise. It was Blackwell. He couldn't see who was in the pod just yet, but when it opened, the monkeys all screeched and went wild, running into the forest. They had been cooped up in that escape pod for days, and they were dying to run around, find some food, and climb some trees. Professor Blackwell was shocked. He adjusted his glasses as Max stepped out of the pod. Max! he yelled. Professor Blackwell ran and wrapped Max up in the biggest hug of his life. Max, I thought, I I thought you were... Professor Blackwell stuttered as he remembered getting the information through news channels that Glaw's stolen ship along with the security bots, had all been destroyed out in space, not far from Flora Prime. Professor Blackwell assumed then that Max and the monkeys had all been destroyed as well. We barely made it out, said Max. Let's go into the laboratory and I can tell you all about it. Max, before we go in there, there, there's something I need to tell you, said the professor. You stink. You stink so, so bad. You smell like... And I mean this in the most scientific and realistic way possible. You smell like a monkey's butt. Max leaned his head down and sniffed himself. Yeah, I do. Me and the monkeys have been stuck in that escape pod for days, said Max. Professor Blackwell looked around Max to the escape pod. The hatch was open, and he could see that the pod was only meant for one adult human. He imagined Max stuck in there with six monkeys and shuddered. Well, maybe you can take a quick shower before we chat. Or a long shower. Or maybe two long showers, said Blackwell. I get it, I get it, said Max. The two entered Blackwell's lab and Max got cleaned up. A few hours later, Max and Professor Blackwell sat and talked about all that had happened since they last saw each other on Flora Prime. Max told him about their journey out into space in Glaw's ship, how he self-destructed the ship by overcharging the Brightstone. Blackwell told Max about his trip to Midwan, and how Glaw's stolen ship was all over the news. Everyone had assumed all parties had been lost in the explosion, and now the dismantling of Flora Prime was so far along that it wasn't safe for humans to be on the surface. The robots were the only ones down there literally tearing the planet apart, sorting the resources and storing them on Blackwell's many ships floating out in orbit. Well, I'm glad you're here, Max, said Blackwell. 
This is a safe place for us to continue our lives, and the monkeys will be right at home in Elder Tree. Well, they're certainly happy to be out of that escape pod, that's for sure, said Max. Max was happy to be safe and to have been reunited with Professor Blackwell, but his heart was broken for his home planet of Flora Prime. It was difficult for him to imagine all the animals and plants being destroyed just to make money for Glaw. Yes, speaking of the monkeys, said Blackwell, changing the subject, I think we should meet them outside and make sure they get cleaned up. Max and Blackwell went outside the laboratory. A few hoses stuck out of the building and they each took hold of one. They chatted while they waited for the monkeys to emerge from the forest. A bit later, the monkeys stepped out of the woods, tired from their sudden burst of energy and hungry for a big meal. Okay, monkeys, line up, said Max. The monkeys all leaped and jumped until they were lined up in front of Blackwell and Max. They thought this was some kind of game. Max took a bottle up to the monkeys and squirted a thick substance all over their heads. By the time he reached the end of the line, the monkeys figured out what was going on. Leo, the monkey who was afraid of water for some reason, tried to run away back into the forest. If you don't get clean, you don't get dinner, yelled Max. Leo hung his head and returned to the line of monkeys, defeated. Okay, you know the drill, Max said, as he and Blackwell each lifted and pointed a hose at the line of soap-covered monkeys. They blasted the stinky monkeys with streams of water and their screeching filled the air. The monkeys reluctantly scrubbed themselves clean until the water dripping from their fur ran clear and they no longer smelled awful. Later that evening, the monkeys and Max and Professor Blackwell were eating in the lab. I have to go back, Max blurted out to Blackwell. Blackwell knew what he meant. I know. I know, said the professor. I don't want you to go back and fight Glaw, but he destroyed your planet. He destroyed your home. I know you won't be satisfied until you at least try. And lucky for you, I've already started planning something. Professor Blackwell got up and led Max over to a corner of the lab hidden behind a curtain. He pulled the curtain back to reveal security bots, just like the ones that Glaw sent to get Max. Max stepped back. Wait, wait, where did you get these? I made them, said Blackwell. When I got the news that you... Well, when I thought that you and the monkeys were gone, I started my own plan for revenge. I got schematics for his security bots and some of his ships. I was planning on making a bunch of security bots that were under my control to fly back to his ships and set them to self-destruct. Max was amazed. He thought about the plan about the Sekbots boarding one of Glaw's ships and blowing up. But his ships are so big, said Max. Would these bot explosions even make a dent? Well, my resources are limited, Max, said Blackwell. I can only do so much, and maybe I do this a few times to disrupt his supply lines, and... I've got a better idea, said Max. How about we hollow out these robots, and me and the monkeys use them as disguises? We infiltrate Glaw's ship and target the Brightstone specifically. He's mining all the Brightstone off Flora Prime. Imagine that much Brightstone being ignited. It'd create an explosion big enough to go supernova. It'd blow up every ship he has in orbit. And so it would blow up you and the monkeys as well? Asked the professor. Max thought about that. Oh yeah, I guess it would. Well, what if we put some explosive device there on a timer so it was set to blow in like an hour or something and then we get in an escape pod and blast away like we did before? Professor Blackwell considered this. The idea of putting a bomb on a timer and escaping before it exploded wasn't so bad. But putting monkeys into robot suits and expecting them to act like robots was a plan destined to fail. Max and Barry turned and looked at the monkeys still eating. Leo and Ruby were taking turns throwing seeds into each other's mouths. Rocky was sleeping with his face half laying in a bowl of soup. Squeak had hollowed out a loaf of bread and was inside eating the last banana. And Luna was sitting on the table cross-legged, meditating, wearing a birthday hat she found somewhere. Where did Luna get a birthday hat? 
asked the professor. I never know, professor, said Max. They left the monkeys to their silliness and turned to the bots that the professor had built so far. There's a good plan here somewhere, said Max. Let's figure out what it is and put an end to Glaw's operation. Professor Blackwell nodded, and the two got to work. The End The website is kidstoriespodcast.com. Send all your drawings and things to kidstoriespodcast at gmail.com. Adios.